Hello and welcome to the 206. My name is Mark, coming to you from Seattle, Washington, and this is Twitching It Up, a Twitch streamer interview series. Twitch is a streaming platform for gamers, singers, and all kinds of content creators from all over the world. My goal with these interviews is to give some insight into the lives of people who use Twitch as a platform to share their talents and engage with their communities. Now, today's guest is the one, the only, DJ Chris Cut, a DJ living and working in Las Vegas, doing both live gigs and Twitch streams, where she specializes in classic hip-hop, old-school R&B songs, and just whatever type of music she loves. So, DJ Chris Cut, welcome to the 206. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me, the 206. No, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for taking the time. And as you know, I've been following you for a little over a year, and you've been on Twitch for about another year on top of that. So let's just start with how did you get started on Twitch, and what was it that made you want to start live streaming in the first place? Well, you know, um, all the stuff that happened during pandemic, um, we were all, of course, all, entertain all entertainment, entertainers. Right. You know, a lot of us were like, well, now what, what can we do with our lives kind of thing? So yeah. not only did it stem from necessarily a boredom of, you know, like, what do I do? But, you know, how can I still connect with people without having to leave my house? You know, that kind of thing is actually what spurred it. So I was doing yeah. like Instagram lives. I did a Facebook live. Oh, wow. um, I did Facebook a couple of times and I kept getting hit with crazy copyright. Same as Instagram. They'd like detect the music and kind of like shut your, oh, okay. your um live down or whatever was going so um it came from a need for me to find a space for me to express myself because as an artist you know i'm um I, i'd like to say i'm extroverted but i still have <laughs> um i don't know you know have you ever take those tests introvert oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. more extrovert but you know <laughs> definitely needed to find something a platform and that's where Twitch came in because I had already known about Twitch for a couple of years because I know people were playing poker on there. Oh, okay. Yeah, or like, you know, in the gaming. And I was like, oh, you know, everybody was talking about, let's try to all go over to Twitch. And that's how it all started because we were getting tired of getting cut off because of copyright. So right, was, exactly. Yeah, that makes a big difference when you can't even do it because you're getting shut down. So I'm glad yeah. that you were able to find a platform like like Twitch. Now, going back to that, you know, when you're starting to figure out Twitch, from a technical standpoint, what was the biggest difference for you between streaming and then actually performing live as a DJ? Oh, my goodness. So um, <laughs> as a live DJ, I wasn't like a hardcore, like... Um, showman when i was a dj mm -hmm. i was more like i was so focused on making sure my transitions were good and moving the crowd but you wouldn't see me like fist pumping or like <laughs> spraying people with champagne right, i was more right. like let me make sure it sounds good to the people that are listening my transitions are clean and they're not like they don't like what the heck was that you know like <laughs> right. you're in a club and you're like dancing and then all of a sudden your vibe is like you know like yeah. but I, you know that was my specialty so um, it was so hard for me to actually start using a microphone. So <laughs> oh, right, right. The first couple of streams were like, hey, guys. <laughs> Hi. Uh, okay. And then just go back to the music, you know, and try to having that balance of like knowing that you're there's people watching you on the other side. Right. You know, so it was crazy. <laughs> it was like just a feeling of people <laughs> like – for me, like, I don't like when people are looking at me when I'm performing or anything, yeah. you know, I think probably singing didn't work out for me too well. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's really interesting yeah. to me that you say that because I guess by the time that I found you, that's one mm -hmm. of the things that I really enjoyed was your interaction with the chat and you, you seem really comfortable talking to the chat and reading the chat. So it sounds like over that first year that you really gain that comfort level and and you know, from my <laughs> perspective, you, you became, you know, a, a valued skill as part of what you do on Twitch. Yeah, it definitely is um, connecting with the people, even without seeing their faces. Yeah. Something important to me, like, I think everybody deserves to have that feeling of being um, acknowledged and, mm. and, like, wanted and loved. And as you know, on my streams, I always <laughs> like to say, I love you guys. Right. I love you. And I <laughs> come from a place of, because, you know, we don't know where certain people are at in their lives. And right. somebody could be, like, really depressed and they hop on Twitch and, I get a little emo thinking about it because I think, you know, <laughs> if, like we've all, we were all like alone for so long, like mm. to have just somebody say the words, I love you, or like right. you're appreciated, you're valued. I appreciate your time is like very important, I think on Twitch. 
No, absolutely. And yeah, thank you for doing that. And thank you for explaining that as well. And so what were some challenges that you ran into that you never would have anticipated you know, as you were first starting? Oh, well, luckily for me, um, the challenge is just was just trying to navigate through all the like nuances and the etiquette. I mean, you know, you still see it nowadays. People are just still even just joining Twitch. Yeah. And, you know, like um, the etiquette part or like, you know, um, more challenging was luckily for me, I, I was very adamant about like um, promoting it yeah. on uh, Instagram and Facebook. I'm like, Hey, I'm on live. I'm on live until, you know, I fought, uh, got enough people to follow. And like, like I said, I think the best part was that there were a lot of DJs we all got on. So everybody oh, was yeah. like, Oh yeah, go on Twitch. So there was this bubble of where everyone, all the DJs that went on Twitch had a lot of viewers because <laughs> Um, we were throwing our viewers around to each other and there weren't a lot of DJs yet. Okay. But now yeah. there's so many, right? Like, <laughs> they have to go, oh, everyone caught on and yeah. getting visibility is a little bit difficult if you don't have that back following of Facebook and um, Instagram or other social media platforms, right? So, oh, absolutely. And it seems like you do a really good job of marketing, marketing yourself on social media. So definitely a, a skill you've developed there. So that's good to know as well. Thank you. Now, uh, sitting here today as we're talking, so if you right now could talk to you from the day you first started to stream, what, what's one bit of advice that you would <laughs> give that DJ Chris Cut? <laughs> I wish I would have streamed more, actually. Uh -huh. Because I think, um, you know, our whole motto is team no sleep. Like yeah. I like the late night. Um, I mean, I say that I wish I would have streamed more, but I'm averaging like a hundred hours a month. Wow. But I think it was more of, um, stream more like, um, during the daytime. Okay. Cause you know, I'm, we're in the U S so the U S market is a little different. So I noticed the numbers of course, during the day, had I probably stayed with the day would have grown a little bit faster, hmm. but I'm very happy with the growth that I have. Like <laughs> I, we all grow at our own pace and, right. you know. I can never, it's never, not that I can never, because I'm guilty of it, but we all try to refrain from um, comparing ourselves to other streamers and DJs, right. you know? So, try to take yeah. it easy. <laughs> like that. Yeah, I think as much as we don't want to, I think there's definitely an inevitability of comparing ourselves to others. So, but as long as we acknowledge what we're doing and kind of are able to set that aside. So, no, but that's, I think that's a really good insight, though, that, that you could have could have maybe taught yourself back then, but, but still it sounds like you're, you're also okay with, um, with how everything has turned out as well. Right. Yeah, definitely. The whole, um, you know, timing of everything. Cause I am such a vampire, you know, and I can't help <laughs> it. I just like to stream at night and yeah. I mean, which is amazing cause I've garnered like, um, a lot of international people. Oh, okay. So yeah. I mean, that's a plus, but, um, you know, I mean, we get more of like the um, Australia, New Zealand, like yeah. the times I usually stream at like, like one, 12, one, two, three in the morning, you know, so well, get some crowd. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely a worldwide community. And even that's represented with the moderators that you have, like, you know, DJ Mary at least was in Japan and just different people from all, all over the place. So it, it sounds like you, or it seems to me like you've really been able to curate that as a you know a, a global audience in a sense that's it's really makes it a lot of fun when no matter when you're on there's going to be like a certain group of people that it's their time to be able to be part of the community yeah actually i was really i think that was more concerning for me at the beginning if you said had i looked back i, mm. I was always like oh nobody's really on from 12 to 3 or 4 right and again nobody had anything to do from 12 to 3 or 4 <laughs> in the morning back then right because we're all stuck at home so right you know, now that when the world started coming back to being okay with, you know, things opening and stuff, I'm like, oh, I wish I could keep a day stream, but I try to be real with myself, you know, and not try to put too much pressure on like, you know, doing too many streams or like promising right. an afternoon stream if I know I'm going to be sleeping. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. No, absolutely. It seems like you found a good balance. And I think one other thing that's helped you with having a good balance with your streaming is you also get a lot of help from your husband, who is also a DJ, DJ mm -hmm. Slip. So tell yeah. me about that team effort the two of you put in to make your stream so successful. Well, what's crazy is um, I had just approached him and I said, hey, I really want to make this Twitch thing work. Mm -hmm. And he 
I think, um, you know, they talk about love languages. I never read the book or whatever all that stuff is with love yeah. languages. But I believe in my heart, like being with my husband over 20 years, his love language is service. Like he likes acts mm-hmm. like so if I say I, I need help with something and he's like, how can I make this work? So he really dug deep and mm-hmm. he really like looked into all the software like we, you know, of course, I wasn't um, initially like, you know, Initially, I, I also liked Twitch because it was like, hey, I can probably make a little bit of income off of this, you know? Yeah. And I'm so grateful that it turned out that I was able to, like, invest in equipment and things like that right. from the strength of the generosity of my Chris Cut Prize community. <laughs> you know, they're so awesome and so sweet. And, I mean, I think every streamer deserves to have um, that kind of community, but it is a lot of work. Right. But, I mean, I think the patience part, so as far as my husband, he was very patient and like very, he was, he was doing all the tech stuff. And I was looking at like, how do I, um, what kind of ideas or how do I want to present myself, you know, on my channel? So right. yeah, oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's really great. I, and that's kind of how I see him in relation to your stream is he's the tech support. When you mm-hmm. do your game nights, he's controlling that part of it. And, and just so that you can focus on being DJ Chris Cut and, and, and DJing. So that's really a, a great thing that the, the two of you have. So I'm glad that you're able to do that. Now, you would also just mention your community, the Chris Cut Fries, as, as you call them. So, yeah. Well, that's one of the things that I really love about your stream. And also, uh, you know, I'm happy to be able to be a part of it, you know, is that community of followers that you've created. And is that something that I guess, I guess you touched on it a little bit already, but is that something that you really set out to do from the beginning with that Chris Cut Fries moniker? Or did that kind of just develop as you established yourself as a streamer? We always joked about Chris Cut Fries all the time because of my name. But yeah. um, Aaron the Era, I think I, I said, hey, should we call ourselves the Chris Cut Fries? Aaron the Era, another uh, awesome DJ video editor, streamer. Uh, I don't think he streams anymore. But anyway, um, yeah, he was like, just, you know, just go with it. Go Chris Cut Fries, you know. Like, <laughs> he went with it. And I mean, like, I already had, like, so how I started was I had, like, close friends come in and, and listen to me. And then, you know, like, other, like, DJ communities that I would meet on Twitch. But it's funny now because not a lot of my close friends um, that helped me start off, like, don't really have too much time to hop on anymore. Right. And, you know, I think that's the thing with Twitch is, like, um, community is so important because, you know, you come into the channel be like, oh, I see TJ Mary, I see Angie, I see Go <laughs> Six, I see Sister Bird. I see, right. you know, so it's kind of like that whole cheers thing, having a place where everyone <laughs> kind of knows your name. And, you know, I think that is the most impor- important part to, uh, for me is to give people that space. Right. Like I would say it, right? Judgment free. You come in, you're having a bad day at work. Yeah. You come in, hang out, just listen to music. You don't even have to chat or, you know, you just want me to say, I love you. I'll tell you, I love you a million times. <laughs> like, you know, I have all my redemptions, yeah. you know, because we're all going through something, right? They yeah, can absolutely. Do something. And um, the community that um, the Chris Clip Fries are so strong in that, you know, like, you know, you come into our channel, you'll see like the people and that's what I really like about it. I don't think if I ever stopped, I would, I would hate it. I feel like, where would I, where would you go? Right. Like if you have a favorite channel, (laughs) where do I go now? You know? So. No, that's a really good point. It really becomes part of our, our lives. And I know there's a lot of, I guess, stereotypes and stuff about like, you know, Mm -hmm. having, you know, like a virtual life versus a real life. But, Mm -hmm. you know, I see them both as the same, just kind of equal parts of life. So, and I think you do such a good job of cultivating that community and making people feel welcome. I think that's, that's what's really been the the key to your success. Now, you also mentioned the DJ community. Now, the Twitch DJ community to me seems like a very tight knit and supportive group of people as well, for the most part. So what does it mean to you? And what has it meant to you uh, at, during your streaming journey to have that type of support network to work with, you know, that includes DJs, you know, as you mentioned, literally from all over the world. Right. Now, for uh, people that are not familiar with the DJ community, mm-hmm. there is a lot of competitiveness and cutthroatness, you know what True. I mean? Yeah. So when Twitch came out, um, a lot of the DJs, you know, a lot of us rallied together to share. Like I said, like if I was streaming, I'd be like, hey, you know, the whole raiding thing, I think just started too. like, right. The implementing of raids had just begun, I think, um, a little bit after 2020 when I was starting, right? Okay. I can't remember the exact date, but, you know, don't quote me on it. But, <laughs> right. Um, you know, just meeting all the DJs, too. I've met so many of them in real life. They do all the Twitch meetups where you can meet the DJs and mods uh-huh. and, and just general viewers. 
I mean, it's um, really beautiful to see because for an industry where people are so competitive, we yeah. really came together and we're like, hey, let's build our, our community. So I see the DJ community is a little different in general, how the channels are run as opposed to like the general music or anything else on Twitch. Cause sure. like, you know, we're like all about spamming emotes and getting crazy with the emotes like <laughs> that. And other where other places they'll be like, Oh, you're banned for spamming. Right. Right. <laughs> so. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely a different experience. That's yeah, for sure. And, and yeah. yeah, what you mentioned is really why I wanted to bring that question up because I know there is like taking it out of Twitch in particular, what we're talking about is that DJ world is, <clears throat> excuse me, is very competitive. So it's interesting to see that contrast. And I, I'm very happy to see that, that networking and support through, through the, the tools that Twitch provides. Yeah, it's interesting because, um, you know, you'll hear, well, I've heard stories of certain markets that like mm -hmm. cities like, oh, this DJ crew and this DJ crew didn't get along and now they're on Twitch together. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> things like that or you know like um djing really involves a lot of ego a lot of people think mm -hmm. you know like especially the um, the higher end like there's a lot of probably like club djs that thought they were too good to like go on to twitch mm. you know and then it's a yeah. big blow to the ego because they're used to having like a thousand people listening to them right um, in person and then they have like three people watching them on twitch <laughs> that they can just can't take that ego yeah. away from it because it's a process on Twitch. Like, unless you're like somebody super famous already and you tell everyone, hey, I'm going on Twitch and right. you have like a million followers on Instagram and then they follow you to, to Twitch, cool. But all these like DJs that were so like superstar, there's a few, I don't want to name that were like, oh, you know, I was like headlining this, headlining that. And then, mm -hmm. you know, no one's watching my channel and they give up. And, you know, because it was like, you know, they didn't really, I don't want to say they didn't want to put in the work, but it's right. just such a different beast to tackle. Right. To to grab everyone to come to Twitch. You know? no, I, I think it is a good point, though, because really, as a, as a club DJ, as somebody who's selling out shows and stuff like that, it's a, it's a very different type of work that you're putting in compared mm -hmm. to what you're putting in to, to being a Twitch streamer. So I can definitely see how, you know, somebody may not be able to adapt to that or just may not want to adapt to that if they're so used to, to doing something else. So no, that's, that's yeah. really good insight. Thank you for, for going into that. Now, uh, another thing that, um, that I really love about you and watching your streams is how you as a person, you proudly represent yourself as a woman and as an Asian American and the Philippines, you know, which is your background and heritage is actually well represented on Twitch. So what does it mean for you to be able to re represent yourself and your heritage in such a meaningful way as a DJ on a platform like Twitch? Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. Like um, I've had to deal with so much. Um, we talk about this too on a few interviews I've done that mm -hmm. when people see how you look, you know, like they assume, oh, you're only getting views because you're female uh, or you know, right. you're cute or, you know, whatever and, and or whatever, things like that. Like um, mm -hmm. at first I was saying this on my MySpace page. I, that's how seasoned mm -hmm. I am. We talk about <laughs> <laughs> on my MySpace page, my, my motto was DJing isn't about how you look, it's how you sound. Mm -hmm. And I was very against like, you know, to each their own and the way they market themselves. But for me, I was like, I don't want people to look at me as like, oh, she's a dope girl DJ. I'm like, mm -hmm. I just want them to be like, oh, she's dope. You know, like, that's awesome. And so I was very like, especially being from the hip hop background, it was all about humility, being humble mm -hmm. and, you know, like not trying to, you know, so stemming from that, like, especially a female doing hip hop, you know, yeah. um, I, for a long time, I didn't want to DJ on anything but turntables. Because oh, wow. I feel like everybody was always like, you know, I made it a point to be like, hey, I'm a turntablist. You know, I know how to use equipment. I know how to connect equipment and all this stuff. And, you know, I'm very proud. I actually like so, you know, for AAPI Heritage, yeah. I know it's going to be over by the time this airs. But, um, you know, next year will be my 30th year DJing in Vegas. Oh, wow. And I, I believe myself to be the very first Filipino-American female DJ on the Las Vegas Strip. Oh, really? Oh, so wow. 20, That's amazing. Yeah. So 20 years ago in 2003, I was, you know, I'm pretty sure I got the very first residency at one of the, the bigger clubs that was starting the revolution of the mega clubs wow. in Vegas. So, I mean, it's, I think I'm very proud of that because, you know, I did bust my butt, you know. So, you know, that's something I'll, I'll always remember and hopefully like something next AP, AAPI month next year, <laughs> I can like really like 
celebrate that, you know? Very oh, absolutely. Important. Congratulations, though. Everything that you mentioned there is such a huge, huge thing, accomplishment, achievement, however you want to put it. So uh, I'm very proud of you for, for, for being able to, to, to say that on your resume and, and what you've, you've achieved. So, so thank you for touching on that as well. So now you would, we'd also touched on the pandemic a little bit. I wanted to go back to that. So during the first stretch of the pandemic, you were 100% streaming online, and then you began to transition back to live gigs after businesses started to open up. Now, I really like how you're dedicated to making sure both streaming and live performing remain an essential part of what you do. So can you talk about that transition of, you know, once things started to reopen and how you kind of created that balance of, of being able to do both? Right. Yeah. So going back into the real world, I think for a lot of us was scary. Of course, we still didn't know what was mm-hmm. happening as far as, you know, are we going to go into another lockdown? You know, mm-hmm. just everyone was still pretty nervous. You know, I was going into my gigs, um, masks are still required. So I'm masked, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, no, they're no longer required any, anymore, obviously, a lot of Vegas venues. Um, but, you know, um, I didn't want to lose the momentum from the um, Twitch family that we've created on right. here, you know, on Twitch, because um, I feel like I, I don't want to abandon them. And I don't want to say that <laughs> any, like, DJs or streamers that don't DJ anymore abandon sure. their communities because the communities understand the lifestyle of the streamer. Right. Right. They're very tolerant and understanding. Like when I say, hey, guys, I'm so tired from my gig yesterday. Mm -hmm. I won't be able to stream tonight or whatever. That was like, you know, they understand. So I'm so grateful I was able to (laughs) take them to work with me now. I asked my agency and I was like, if I have the Internet capability, is it okay? And they said yes. And my heart just like Mm -hmm. exploded. I was like, yeah, (laughs) cool. You know, because um I think it's nice insight into like what we deal with. Like, it's so funny. You'll see people come up to with requests or ask yep. for things and you see my, my reaction. I can relate, <laughs> you know? But um, the transition was definitely, um, I did get burnt out at one point because, mm-hmm. you know, um, I think there was like a couple of times I was working three or four times and then, you know, I would want to stream. But now that, like I said, I'm able to do both. Yeah. Um, it really helps. Like, you know, I'm grateful for that because I feel like when you lose that momentum on Twitch, people don't come back as much anymore. They're like, oh, that person's not on anymore. And, right. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't maintain a consistent schedule, it, it's really easy to lose that consistent viewership. So, yeah, and one of the things that, you know, I keep saying things that I love about your streams, uh-huh. but the, the fact that you've been able to make that transition successful and that you are able to live stream from actual venues and you mm-hmm. do it really well too. Like you're, you're still able to give almost the exact same experience that you get, like if you're at home in your setup and everything, but Mm -hmm. still with that little bit of a difference of being at a live gig. So it's just so much fun, as you mentioned as well, of being able to see that kind of, like we're almost like in a VIP situation. They're like behind me when you see her, like. (laughs) Exactly, so yeah, it's it's really exciting. So is that, um, like what would you say is, is your, favorite thing about being able to to do that uh, having that kind of combined dual experience the most uh well the best part is that the time flies because oh, you yeah. know i am doing um from like three hours to seven hours yeah. so um before pandemic and i say this a lot before pandemic mm-hmm. i would be like three four hours is okay i can do it you know i could swing it without getting too bored but yeah. Since I started like streaming and have like all this ADD multitasking stuff going around <laughs> me, like um, last night I actually had to do an, a gig for two hours at a pool and it was like kind of dead because, you know, yeah. um, I was doing a, a gig at a timeshare and people have their plans on holiday weekend. So sure. we're, you know, like they were like, oh, you know, we're going to go watch shows or whatever. So there's like six or seven people at this pool and it was a two hour gig. But I, I tell you, it felt like six oh, hours. Wow. <laughs> I, was like, I was already teetering because I was already, I had already done 12, like four hours earlier. The right. Pool pools and it was 95 degrees wow. and then I had like an hour and a half break and I went upstairs and I'm like you would think two hours would fly but then I felt like the clock was <laughs> like oh, it was backwards. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh my gosh you know but like I mean I got through it and then I was like I really wish I had streamed it so I have company and I feel like it changes the vibe of how I play too when I stream oh, okay. it. right because I'm not playing at a club most of the time I'm playing where people are eating mm-hmm. 
So, or, or like, you know, just at a bar. So there's no dance floor, but I feel like, oh yeah, you know, like, even though I feel like no one's listening to me at the bar, I have the Twitch people that are listening to me. So it changes my energy, you know? No, oh, that's true. That, that's a, that would definitely make a big difference. And I, I love how you, how you put that too. Like, cause it, it really, it really does make a difference if you've got that constant interaction going versus like you said, if there's just a small amount of people out there, it's like, what do you do? There's no one to talk to. You're just kind of there. So yeah. I'm glad that's one of the things I'm, I'm glad that you've been able to, to have as a transition is to be able to bring the Chris cat fries with you. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, just love watching you and, and even admire what you do. So now that's a, a good transition to my next question because I know there are a lot of people out there that do admire what you do and see you as even a role model in a, in a lot of instances. But who do you look up to, and who has had an influence on your uh, you know Twitch journey specifically? Uh, as far as Twitch people, like I remember um, Audio One was you know somebody I looked up to because he had very good high energy streams yeah. and you know. Um, DJ White Gold, like all the streamers that were doing like charity streams, you know, I did a lot of the charity streams, like yeah. people that do things for a cause, um, you know, it's very inspiring. I, I definitely have my husband, DJ Slip, to lean on and <laughs> think he's, you know, um, actually, I think it helped him grow too, to be able to do things, you know, um, beyond the scope of um, our event company. We have an event company, um, which he pretty much runs. And uh, it's really helped us expand just like, the things I never thought I'd be able to do, you know, like um, I like watching other streamers. I know some people are watching my streams because it was kind of crazy because I was so into exploring like the stream avatars, the little characters running around and all yeah. the raffles. And I was like, what can I do that's <laughs> new? What can I do that's different? And so, you know, I would watch other streamers too and, you know, try to get ideas. But, you know, a lot of it was more research. But yeah, you said original question, who do I look up to? Like, sure. you know, all the um you know i think um yeah audio one was a main one and who else had like lots of viewers like at first and um you know but now we're all kind of spread out everywhere oh know? yeah yeah. Oh, absolutely. So a different take on that question then is who inspires you that's not a dj or a streamer who inspires me that's not a dj or a streamer like who do I, who do i look to or like yeah, just just in life who inspires you me <laughs> I don't know like that's a good question I'm very <laughs> spiritual like yeah. you know I, I look up to you know I'm a Catholic I'm, uh, I like to pray when I can I'm, I don't, I'm not a perfect Catholic I don't think anyone <laughs> but yeah definitely um, a very God-fearing woman so I sure. guess you could say like Jesus God you know yeah. very like spiritual in that sense um, singer is Janet Jackson <laughs> Right, right. Yeah, I, I, I know you love Janet, Janet. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say my Janet and, you know, all that stuff. So, um, but in life, my mom, I love my mom to pieces. Mm. I see yeah. uh, she lives with me. And um, that's where I, another part of where I balance my life is, you know, t uh, taking care of my mom and uh, yeah. taking her out of the house whenever I can, you know. No, absolutely. No, that, that, that's one of the um, things I notice about you too, that you talk about your mom a lot. You spend a lot of time with your mom. So that's uh, mm -hmm. definitely somebody who I think is a, a huge influence and, and has a big impact on your life. So thank you for those examples. Now, uh, also you, you, know, you had mentioned Janet as a singer. Now, <laughs> One thing you and I, or you, one thing that you and I talked about that you touch on every once in a while in your streams is how you were once part of a singing group. So yeah. how, how did that come about? What was the singing group and what was that whole experience like for you? Yeah, so uh, in the night, <laughs> in the <early laughs> night, 19, like 1999, so 99, um, it was actually the period of when there were a lot of um, Filipino American and Asian American groups mm. uh, coming out you know, putting out albums, you know, like Jocelyn, Pinai, One Voice. And, yeah. um, you know, I had my streak of that. I uh, got with a friend who became our manager. I was the very first member to audition. Oh, wow. It pretty much was like a Beyonce, uh, Destiny's Child thing where, like, girls were in, girls were out, you know. Oh, like, okay. first we had three people, then we had four, then we had five, and then we had three. And it's very overwhelming because back then too, it was hard to find talent. You know, we were, I think I talk about it too, like on stream yeah. of like, 
oh, uh, auntie babies, nieces, cousins, uh, you know, brother's daughter is a singer in this city. You want to maybe audition them and, you know, you know, like that kind of thing. Now it's like yeah. go on YouTube and find like five people and stick them together right. or, you know, or like K-pop. They are kind of like raised that way. Yeah. Finding talent back then was like very hard to put together, yeah. you know. So that was a crazy experience. And um, I did try to, like, we did try to have seriously, like, try to make it. Recorded a couple songs. The name of the group was Black Pearl. Okay. And, um, you know, it la- that was, like, a three-year journey for me. Sure. Um, like, you know, ups and downs, like, doing a couple of talent shows until, like, I realized, oh, you know, uh, near the end, it was like, okay, um, we're still young and nobody really wants to be serious <laughs> about this. So we, our group broke up and oh, okay, ways, yeah. So you had a, you had a good run there for a couple of years. So it sounds like it was a valuable learning experience, at least if nothing else. Ooh, yeah, well, like you know, putting um, a group of um, people, male or female, you know, a lot of butt heads, butt or you know, right. like you don't always get that perfect combination. But I was very grateful to have the experience because for me it was all about I just loved making um like harmonizing and arranging music Mm. like I always say maybe if I had not gone into DJing I would be a songwriter or like you know vocal arranger even though I I feel like I don't have I don't have a Beyonce voice obviously but I love to sing you know (laughs) what I mean so I mean sing my heart out no absolutely so well, and that, that's one thing that really comes across in your streams and then, you know, in this conversation and everything that we've talked about is that you just love music. And mm-hmm. so is that something that developed at an early age or where does that love of music come from for you? Oh, yeah, that was definitely cultivated very early on. Um, <laughs> very, very early. I don't even know when it actually started, but I had a picture of me with my dad's headphones, stereo oh, wow. on. Definitely since a little kid. Um singing um playing the organ uh playing the piano oh and i i I was able to like um i wish i would have cultivated my skill in um playing by ear i used to be able to listen Uh to a song and just be able to play it like you know all these amazing talented musicians on uh, twitch that do that you know but you know uh i could still kind of play a little bit but not in that level of where i could hear a song and just just go at it you know Right, right Yeah, it's definitely something that takes a lot of practice and, you know, it can be a talent that you have, but Mm -hmm. if you're not constantly working that talent, then it kind of, I don't want to say fades away, but it doesn't continue to develop, I guess is maybe a better way of putting it. No, but, no, but thank you for going into that. It's, it definitely, as I mentioned, it's no matter what you do, whether it's making music, playing music, singing songs, you know, there's definitely that, that background and and love of music that you have. So a final, final question for you now, you know, looking back on your, entire twitch journey this last couple of years but what's the first thing that comes to mind that makes you feel gratitude about that whole experience oh my gosh just the people i've met i got to meet you in person <laughs> I, right i still get overwhelmed i mean there's gonna be some like i'm gonna do a um, a gig tonight and there's a couple twitch people that you know they take the time when they're here in vegas to come say hello and i feel grateful yeah. that i'm in a city like that yeah. where people can say oh, i'm coming to your city but I could only offer be like, hey, if I'm working, I can see you because it's hard for me to like kind of go like out of my way when I'm not, you know, working just because right. I have such a tight schedule. But, you know, I'm grateful for all these relationships. Um, Sister Bird is now my best friend. I've, yeah. I've gained friends. I've lost friends. Yeah. But, you know, the whole thing um, that makes me so grateful about Twitch is the um, connections, just the connections, even yeah. if it's just a name that briefly pops in and says hi and said, Hey, you made my day. My heart is for, <laughs> you know, like, Hey, yeah. cool. Like I like your music or, you know, whatever, even, you know, but um, yeah, I think it just really is all about um, the people aspect of it. I love it so much. I'm very grateful. Like for you. <laughs> for you. <laughs> no, that, that's amazing. I love that. Thank yeah. you. Now, DJ Chris cut, Christine, I'm, I'm grateful to have met you both on Twitch and in real life, like you just mentioned. And, you know, I just want to acknowledge you for who you are as a streamer, you know, as a DJ and just as a person too. you know, the last couple of years have been challenging for everyone. And, you know, what you have accomplished during that time, it's, you know, it's incredible and it's inspiring. So thank you for, for just being you and existing. And, you know, thank you for taking the time to have this conversation as well. 
Well, thank you for inviting me, and I love talking to you, and I appreciate you being a Chris Cut Fry as well. <laughs> so I love all your note taking in the chat. Yeah. With <laughs> like the best yeah. part to read. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. So thanks, Mark. I appreciate being able to do this. It just makes me happy if I can inspire somebody or just share the story because you know music is my love language music yeah. is my heart and i'm glad to still be able to do it so you know yeah absolutely i love it thank you so everybody this is dj chris cut my name is mark and this is the 206 twitching it up interview series to find dj chris cut online just search dj chris cut on twitch and all social media platforms thank you for watching please subscribe to this channel hit the like button and also check out 206.com the official home of all content from the 206 thank you so much be safe and see you next time